David, a young hero. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. When David, the youngest son of Jesse, was a boy, he often took care of his father's sheep. In the beauty and quiet of the hills around Bethlehem, he had time to think about God and often worshipped him with the singing of psalms. Little did David dream that someday the Lord would send the great prophet Samuel to his father's house to anoint a future king of Israel. God had told Samuel to go to Bethlehem and there anoint one of Jesse's sons. When Samuel arrived at Jesse's home and saw Eliab, the oldest son, he was sure that this must be the one whom the Lord had chosen. But God said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or his height, because I have rejected him. The Lord does not see as man does. Man looks on outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. And Jesse had seven of his sons come before Samuel. But God didn't show that any of them should be anointed king. Are these all the sons you have? There is still another, the youngest. He is out in the field looking after the sheep. Then send for him at once. When Samuel saw the ruddy, handsome youth, he was impressed. And the Lord said to Samuel, Anoint him. This is the one I have chosen. Many years would pass before David would sit on the throne of Israel. But this anointing meant that God had chosen him to be the future leader of his people. And the Spirit of the Lord came on David mightily from that day on. The Lord had rejected King Saul because of his disobedience. Although Saul continued to rule Israel, the Spirit of the Lord no longer was with him, and he would sink into black moods of anger and despair. One day, Saul's servants suggested a way in which he might be helped. O oh, king, an evil spirit is tormenting you. Why don't you order us to find a man who is skillful in playing the harp? When the evil spirit troubles you, have him play, and you will be well again. Go and find such a man. Bring him to me. In Bethlehem, I saw a son of Jesse who was skillful at playing. His name is David. He's a man with courage. He also knows how to speak well. He's handsome, and the Lord is with him. Bring that musician to me at once. As the king's servants had hoped, David's playing proved helpful. His music soothed Saul. And whenever the black moods left him and he was well again, the king would let David return to his father's home at Bethlehem. After a time, King Saul and the Israelites faced new trouble. The Philistine army invaded Judah and drew up for battle near the town of Soko. Saul also gathered together an army and camped on a hill opposite them. And the Israelites trembled with fear when they saw the champion which the Philistines sent out to challenge them. 
His name was Goliath, a giant almost 10 feet tall. He wore armor of bronze and carried a huge spear. And he shouted a challenge to the men of Israel every day. Why don't you come out to fight? Am I not a Philistine? Are you not Saul's men? Choose a man from among you and send him to me. If he kills me, we shall be your slaves. But if I kill him, then you shall be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel. Send me a man so we can fight. But all of the Israelites were terrified when they heard Goliath. And Saul, too, was frightened by Goliath's challenge. Day after day, Goliath repeated his challenge. And day after day, the men of Israel became more afraid. King Saul promised great riches and his daughter as a wife to anyone who would kill the giant. But no one had the courage to try. Now three of Jesse's sons were in Saul's army, and their father sent David to find out how his brothers were getting along and to bring gifts of food to them and their captain. While David was with his brothers, the voice of Goliath was again heard in the camp, challenging the Israelites as before. I defy the armies of Israel. Send me a man so we can fight. What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine, who's put shame on all of Israel? Who is this heathen that he can insult the armies of the living God? Eliab, David's oldest brother, became angry when he heard David speaking so bravely and scolded him harshly. But when some others heard what David had said, they reported it to Saul. King Saul was overjoyed to learn that someone had been found to fight the champion of the Philistines until he saw who he was, a mere youth, a simple shepherd dressed for the pasture rather than the battlefield. But David spoke confidently to the king. No one need be afraid. I will fight this Philistine. You cannot fight the giant. You are but a youth. And he has been a warrior from his youth. I take care of my father's sheep. And once when a bear came, took a lamb from the flock. I went after him, struck him down and snatched the lamb from his mouth. Once when a lion came, I caught him and killed him too. I killed both the lion and the bear. And this Philistine shall be as one of them, because he has insulted the armies of the living God. The Lord who saved me from the lion and the bear will save me from this Philistine. Go, and the Lord be with you. Because of David's great faith in God, the king no longer tried to hold him back. But Saul had little hope, especially when David refused to wear the king's armor. David went and picked out five smooth stones from a brook and put them in his shepherd's bag. Then, With his staff in one hand and his sling in the other, he approached the Philistine giant. Goliath had shouted his challenge at the Israelites for many days and had received no answer. Now, suddenly, he saw a challenger coming. But what a challenger. A mere youth, seemingly unarmed with nothing but a staff in his hand. And Goliath made fun of him. Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? Come to me and I shall feed your body to the birds and animals. You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin. I come to you in the name of the Lord, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you've insulted. Today the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and the whole world will know that Israel has a God. David spoke with such confidence that for a moment, Goliath hesitated. But when he looked again and saw how small and defenseless this young shepherd really was, the giant was sure of victory. So the mighty champion of the Philistines came forward to fight the small young man. Then David took one of the stones from his bag and placed it in his sling. 
Unaware of David's intention, Goliath came closer. But by then, David was already swinging his slingshot, and the stone from it struck the giant on the forehead. Then David ran and stood over the stricken giant lying on the ground, after which he picked up Goliath's huge sword. With great effort, he raised the heavy sword with both hands and brought it down with all his might, killing the Philistine giant. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they ran away. And the men of Israel started to shout and pursued the Philistines and won a great victory. After David's victory over Goliath, the king welcomed him to the palace and treated him with royal favor. But even more, David was rewarded with the friendship of Jonathan, the king's son. And Jonathan gave David his most valued possessions, his belt, his royal robe, his sword and bow, as a sign of deep and lasting friendship. But before long, King Saul became jealous of David, especially after he heard the women singing his praises in the street and saying, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. David gets praise for tens of thousands. I for only thousands. What more can he get but my kingdom? From that day on, Saul planned to kill David. The next day, when David played before the king, his music failed to calm Saul. Instead, the jealous ruler hurled a spear at him in an angry rage. But the spear missed David, who jumped aside and hurried away. After this, Saul made other attempts on David's life, but without success, for the Lord was with David. But when Saul continued to plot against him, Jonathan came before the king to plead for his friend. Don't sin against David. He's not sinned against you. He risked his life for you. He killed Goliath, and the Lord gave Israel a great victory. You saw it and were delighted. Why then do you want to murder David without a reason? As the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. But Saul failed to keep his promise and made further attempts on David's life. One day, David hid in a field where he waited for a message from Jonathan, who had promised to tell him when it would be safe to return to the palace. After three days, Jonathan came to the field and gave the signal that had been agreed upon. He shot three arrows from his bow and sent a boy to pick them up. Isn't the arrow far beyond you? Hurry, don't stand there. When David heard what Jonathan said, he knew that he must flee for his life, that he would never be safe in the palace while Saul was king. As soon as Jonathan had sent the boy away, David came out of his hiding place, and the two friends tearfully said goodbye. Go in peace, for we have both sworn in the name of the Lord. We said, the Lord be the witness between you and me, and between your descendants and mine forever. Then David and Jonathan parted, and David went into hiding in the wilderness. There he was to suffer troubles and persecution that he might become a good king, a man after God's own heart.